Hello Rotarians. Thank you for being here today to watch this video recording where I present um, about our Rotary Foundation doing good in the world. My name is Deborah Lowe. I am the Senior Major Gift Officer on staff with the Rotary Foundation. I am based in North Georgia and I cover all of uh, Zone 34, which are 14 Rotary districts um, that's comprised of three in the state of Georgia, eight in Florida, and three in the Caribbean. Um, I'm also a Rotarian. I'm between clubs right now, having just relocated to North Georgia from Florida, um, but I have been a Rotarian for more than 20 years, and I've been very fortunate to have been on staff with the Rotary Foundation in my role um, for the past 11 years. And I am truly blessed to have the opportunity to work with so many Rotarians just like you who have a tremendous passion for doing good in the world, for our Rotary Foundation, um, and for serving the community and humanity. In my role, um, I've had the opportunity to get to know uh, many Rotarians, probably some of you who are viewing this today, and really get to hear your passion and what's important to you and the stories of how you've really made a tremendous impact. I've gotten to do a lot of travel, um, including working the Seoul Convention, where I was in the House of Friendship and met many of you and many new Rotarians from all over the world. Um, and I've also gotten to travel to some unusual places, again, thanks to the generosity of our Rotarians. So one of the coolest things I've gotten to do is a Rotarian um, who's from the Netherlands, who's actually based in District 6930, um, District Governor like Els had invited me to go to the Netherlands with her to attend a um, event that was based around Rotary and it was actually um, in response to a gift that she had made. And I'll get to more of that later, but this is just a, a little bit of an example of some of the cool things I get to do. Um, I flew into the Netherlands. I immediately went to a Rotary Club meeting, which was conducted in Dutch. I had an interpreter. And then afterwards the Rotarians wanted to take me to see the beach. And so we went to the beach and then they drove to a small shop that had um, just fish in the window, and they picked out a carton of uh, fish and handed them to me, and it was two um, herrings. And these were raw herrings with the heads cut off, and they explained to me that I had to just eat them. And I think it was a test and a rite of passage because I did eat the herring, and uh, ever after that, I was um, in their good graces, and on we went to have a great time together. But um, this is just an example of some of the amazing things that I get to do uh, in my role as a gift officer. So what we do, of course, with the Rotary Foundation is we build goodwill and a more peaceful world. The mission of our Rotary Foundation is to enable Rotarians to advance world understanding, goodwill and peace, the improvement of health, support of education, and the alleviation of poverty. And we accomplish this by using the expertise and compassion of Rotarians just like you, who foster effective and sustainable projects around the world. And we're looking to our future and incorporating projects within the six areas of focus that bring us closer to our mission while supporting the amazing work of all Rotarians. Through our Rotary Foundation and your tremendous passion, we reach out to both local and international communities enriching the lives of millions. I'm so pleased and proud of this organization. Uh, we are one of the top rated charitable organizations. Um, for the past 12 consecutive years, we've had four star ratings with Charity Navigator, which is the leading evaluator for nonprofits in the United States. And it's in recognition of our ex exceptional impact, accountability, and transparency. The Association of, Association of Fundraising Professionals named the Rotary Foundation as the world's outstanding foundation, and CNBC has named us as one of the top 10 charities changing the world for two consecutive years. So I wanna start my presentation by giving you an update about where we stand um, in pol polio eradication, um, our number one funding priority, and it continues um, to be a bit of a challenge for us, but we do continue to make progress. So there's a little bit of good news and a little bit of bad news. Um, as you know, the Polio Plus program began in 1985. More than 2 billion children have received the oral, oral polio vaccine, and more than 210 countries, territories, and areas around the world are now polio-free thanks to your efforts and the success of, success of the National Immunization Days and your continued generous support of Polio Plus. In 2018, we had 33 total cases of polio. However, last year, 2019, 
was a challenging year. We had 175 total cases, 29 of those in Afghanistan and 146 in Pakistan. So it can be a bit disheartening, um, but this is attributed to the fact that um, we continue to have challenges with the government, with the military, with the religious groups, we do continue to make good progress. There's been some talk about the vaccine um, creating a vaccine-derived polio. And to clarify, this is not a failure of the vaccine. Rather, it's the result of failure to sustain sufficiently high levels of routine immunization, which caused the live but weakened form of the virus used in the vaccine to revert over time to a stronger, wild-like form. And so this speaks to the need to get out there and reach these children, not once, but multiple times to make sure that they're properly immunized. When the countries decide to cease vaccination efforts, um, this is when we begin to see this uptick in these cases. The good news is that we consider um, combined target population of children are under the age of five in those two countries is 49 million. So while the numbers are certainly disheartening, we don't want to have, hear that any child contracts polio. Um, we are looking at 49 million children that we're reaching. There's been no transmission of the wild polio virus beyond these two countries, and it's been three years since we've had a case in Africa. So we are poised to certify the country of Africa as polio free. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation continue to be an amazing partner of ours. Uh, they continue with the two to one match. So every gift that you make to Polio Plus is matched two to one by the Gates Foundation. And they announced in this past January that they're going to continue the partnership with us um, to match um, all gifts to achieve a goal of $150 million raised per year for Polio Plus. As of today, we had 17 cases in Pakistan. Um, however, um, President elect Holger and past President Ravi met with the leadership of Pakistan uh, last month, and they're completing advocacy meetings in Pakistan and in March, and we just continue to move forward. And again, with your continued generous support, we will achieve our goal. And so this is how we do it. Over the next several years, hundreds of millions of children will continue to be immunized against polio to protect the gains we've made in the 40 countries, and this requires over 150,000 polio workers who are all supported by the Global Polio Eradication Initiative, which includes Rotary, includes the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, World Health Organization, CDC, and our other partners. Many of you have held your own World Polio Day events locally in your clubs, and we thank you for that. We encourage you to do that again um, in the coming year to post those on, on social media so that we continue to just be advocates for what we're doing to achieve a polio-free world. Um, in two, from 2016 to 2019, the CDC has actually hosted a World Polio Day event um, at their facility. Um, the event was actually live streamed from the CDC in 2016. Um, and if you ever have an opportunity, um, Zone 34 occasionally will open up an opportunity to visit the CDC they will roll out the red carpet for Rotarians, and you'll have an opportunity to actually see the polio labs, see the polio war room where the surveillance is conducted. Um, and it's the same infrastructure that was built that it was used in the Ebola outbreak, and it is um, also to some extent going to be used as we deal with um, the coronavirus. So I hope you're all familiar, of course, with our six areas of focus. Um, and it's whether it's eradicating polio or providing life-saving clean water and sanitation to villages in developing countries, or, I, or providing educational opportunities, um, opportunities for women and, and others to build their own business through economic and community development. We really are providing the circumstances to promote peace throughout the world. And what makes our organization special? The Rotary Foundation addresses all of the greatest educational humanitarian needs. We have a reach that's far greater than the United Nations because of the Rotarian to Rotarian connections. And we are able to go where politicians and religious groups cannot. Another um, funding directive that we have, an initiative that is very close behind in Polio Plus in, our, in the importance is our Rotary Peace Centers. The program was established in 2002 with a vision of creating sustainable peace by building networks of peace builders and community leaders 
dedicated to preventing and resolving global conflicts. More than 1,200 Peace Fellows have gone through the program, and we have six Rotary Peace Centers located at seven universities. Um, it's Duke University um, at uh, Duke UNC in Chapel Hill, uh, the University of Bradford in England, Uppsala University in Sweden, um, the Christian University in Japan, and the University of Queensland in Australia. We also offer fellowships for professionals who want to learn a, earn a certificate in peace and development studies with a one-year program. And these fellows will complete field studies and they also design and carry out a social change initiative. So they are actually putting uh, what they're learning to um, practical application. And we have two of these certificate peace centers, uh, one in Bangkok, Thailand, and our newest uh, facility, which is in Kampala, Uganda. So ways to give, um, and you may notice I'm not talking a lot about recognition because what I really wanna do is give you um, some insight onto how you can direct your gift and the impact that it can have. So I, I won't be talking about Paul Harris Fellows and Paul Harris Societies, but more I'll be talking about our different funds, the designations, how you can direct your gift to truly make a difference. So the annual fund is probably what you're most familiar with. Um, it's giving to the annual fund that provides the district designated funds back to your clubs and your districts that you can use to carry out your projects and then have matched by the Rotary Foundation. Um, give all your gifts to the annual fund are invested in a three-year cycle. And again, 50% will come back to your district for projects in a three-year cycle. And the other 50% will actually go to the World Fund uh, where the trustees will direct those gifts towards the most critical needs and projects um, that have been, again, developed by all of you, your Rotarians. So while it's great to give outright to the Rotary Foundation and support the here and now, what I refer to as our checking account, Rotary also has an endowment fund, which I refer to as our savings account. Gifts to the Rotary's endowment fund are invested and professionally managed to provide a stream of income that supports Rotary's local and global philanthropic work in perpetuity. The most common way to support the endowment fund is through a bequest society commitment. That's a, a commitment that you leave in your estate plans or through by designating the Rotary Foundation as the beneficiary of an insurance policy or um, by beneficiary of a 401k. And this gift will um, not be spent. So again, it's our savings account. It is invested and it's the spendable earnings that will help support Rotary Foundation's projects and programs. And you as a Rotarian have the opportunity to, just like um, with your outright giving, direct your gift to the program that means the most to you. If you made a gift to Endowment Fund Share, that's gonna, going to be realized and the spendable earnings will come back to the district as DDF in perpetuity. Same as if you were to support water and sanitation, your um, gifts, spendable earnings would support grants in that particular area of focus. So to put this into a good perspective, a $25,000 gift or bequest society commitment made to the endowment fund when, when realized will yield approximately $1,000 in spendable earnings for Rotary Foundation programs each year. So if you were to designate your bequest to endowment fund share, Approximately $1,000 a year will come back in spendable earnings. So you're essentially endowing your Paul Harris Society membership. There are other ways to give to the Rotary Foundation and is your major gift officer, or if you are listening to this and you're in another zone besides zone 34, um, there are major gift officers um, based all over North America and they'll be happy to help you. Um, other ways we like to talk to our Rotarians about giving and really fulfilling your philanthropic goals is either by charitable gift annuities or charitable remainder trusts, which not only help the Rotary Foundation, but they will also provide an income stream and tax benefits to you. Indiv individual retirement accounts you can give through your IRA directly to the Rotary Foundation without the tax burden. And then we also have a donor advised fund that you can set up with us where you're essentially setting up your own foundation that you can manage and direct gifts um, out to the Rotary Foundation and to any other 501c3. And this is really a service that we offer to um, two Rotarians and to occasionally a non-Rotarian, uh, where we're giving you the opportunity to manage your own foundation, but we care, we take care of 
the IRS filings. We invest this for you um, through a plan of your choosing. And it's a great way to get the Rotary name out when you uh, direct a gift to another charitable organization. The Rotary name goes with it and your name goes with it also. I have Rotarians who have set up donor advised funds as a way to teach their children about philanthropy by sitting down with them and um, having them choose the charitable organizations that they wish to support and then making the grants through the donor advised fund. So your gifts to Rotary Foundation truly make a difference now and for generations to come. And I talked a bit about, um, in the beginning, my little story about going to the Netherlands. And on a more serious note, the reason I went there was, again, because of the generosity of District Governor-elect Els, who wanted me to be there and really see uh, what she was passionate about and where she directed her gift. So, um, so this is me in the brown sweater. Uh, this is Governor-elect Els in the center and my colleague, um, Peter Schnell, who is actually a major gift officer with the European office. And we are standing outside of the IHE Delft Institute for Water Education in the Netherlands. And um, I got to know Els um, back when her husband had passed away and his bequest was realized and, and she went ahead and gifted that to the Rotary Foundation. And then several years later, she called me and told me she wanted to make a significant gift in support of IHE Delft, which at the time was a partnership with UNESCO um, and the Rotary Foundation. So it's no longer a partnership, but you can still make gifts um, to IHE Delft. And Els wanted to make her gift and direct it to the Institute, but specifically to provide scholarships um, for students that were coming into study. The students that come into the Institute come from developing countries and countries all over the world. Um, they come in for intensive training that really at a, at a level that they can't get anywhere else. And the wonderful thing about these students is those who come from developing countries will return to their countries and continue to work in their villages where, um, where they really can have an impact, going back with these skills that they never would have been able to achieve any other way. And so scholarships really play an important role because obviously these students would never have the resources uh, to be able to get this level of education. So um, we went and we toured the facility. We met some of the existing students that were studying there. Um, we had an opportunity also to meet with some other prospective donors. And Elle spoke a bit about her passion and why she made this extremely generous gift. And recently, Peter uh, sent me a thank you card um, because Elle's scholars, who she funded, are now at the Institute um, in the middle of their, their first year studying. So he sent a thank you card uh, for me to share with Els, and I want to just read a couple of the things that these students wrote because it really speaks to the impact that all of you have in your gifts, and you may not get a thank you card from one of the beneficiaries of your gift, and you may not know exactly where your gift is going, unlike Els, where she was very specific. You may direct your gift to an area of focus and not know exactly the project that is fulfilling. This is these three examples I'm going to read to you are really a true statement of the impact that you have. The first one was from Ankita from India. She wrote, Thank you for opening a door to the world of water and learning. I will be grateful forever. Iliad from Palestine. Thank you so much for your contribution to support our education and knowledge, especially in water. This will benefit my community in the besieged Gaza Strip who are suffering from a severe lack of healthy drinking water. We are all most appreciative. And Ali from Sierra Leone, thank you for investing in my future. Surely the knowledge I gain will positively impact my community and the world. So in closing, I thank you for the impact that you have and the difference that you make. The Rotary Foundation and you continue a more than 100 year tradition of uniting leaders from all continents, cultures, and industries for the common good. The Rotary Foundation sincerely appreciates your dedication to making a difference in a way that is unique to you and provide an ongoing stewardship to ensure that your charitable goals are fulfilled. Your legacy is Rotary's promise. Thank you. <music>